The trip started at Amsterdam Airport, where I met up with Mikolai Elazer Ogonowski. What'd you get? What'd you get? <laughs> you were surprised? I got an Excel for you. So you can grab some. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna film your entire meal. That's fine. After Miko Y finished his entire meal, we met up with Drogo, who, after some mistakes, had to go through the airport security again at Amsterdam Airport. For anyone who traveled through Amsterdam Airport in the past two months, knows that it's absolutely impossible to make that line in less than one hour and 30 minutes. Drogo did it in 45 minutes and barely managed to make his flight. The flight was uneventful, but then when I landed, I almost died out of cringe after Miko Y made this move. Day 2 started with me setting up at my computer as I got seated into group stage 2, where I had DNS, Trigger, as well as the Spanish player Killer Monjas as my opponent. But before I got to any of these, I first had to do something else that was extremely important, and that was to find a box. I'm gonna show them how I follow the box. Louis Vuitton. Is that too tall? You're too tall. After I finished loading my monitor on top of the box, I finally was ready to warm up and get prepared for my first opponent in the group, the Spanish Protoss player, Killer Monjas. As Killer Monjas was a 5.2k Protoss player, both games were rather easy. And within 11 minutes, I managed to grab the 2-0 and get into the winner's match. And as DNS had beat Trigger in the other match in my group, I got to play against DNS. My early game was pretty darn good as I managed to kill a bunch of workers with my first oracle and hardly take any damage myself. This allowed me to snipe my opponent's fourth base in the mid game and from that point on put on constant pressure, continue expanding and eventually with some slick stalker disruptor play, win the game. And in the second game I managed to trick DNS by hiding my probe and building a nexus as he was going upstairs to see if I had taken any gases. I didn't, my early game was pretty good, my mid game was okay, and I took a couple of decent fights. Everything was going well until the Fire Nation attacked, or well, until the Disruptor Shot hit all of my stalkers. The game felt pretty bad for me as the base trade started happening until I hit these massive Disruptor Shots, which allowed me to finally have a real chance at fighting this army. I had more eco, a lot more gateway units, managing to hit a couple extra disruptor shots. I blinked in and killed the remaining carriers and stalkers and won the series. This win meant that I got first in my group and I now had to wait for my third group stage to be announced. I got placed in a group with Mio Maika, Botwinnik and Clem. Probably the easiest group in all of group stage 3. Now of course the easiest group is still difficult and that got proven to me after losing the first series 2-0 against a Hydra in of a 45 workers followed up by this Queen Nidus into Muta play. I stood no chance, played rather poor and got absolutely destroyed in a very one-sided fashion. My second match went better. Despite losing the first game to a one day store all in, I managed to come back into the series by winning game two against the quick SCV pool, while in game number three stopping the same Thor all in that beat me in game number one. I knew he was gonna do it and I was very well prepared for it. After winning this match, I got to play the rematch against Mio Maika once again, and this time I was gonna change things up. Rather than opting for some type of gateway composition, I wanted to go for Disruptor Void Ray to easily defend all of his all-ins, and it worked out beautifully. After already winning game number one, game number two also was a rather easy defense, and after holding his initial all-in, I pushed across the map and picked up the 2-0 victory, allowing me to advance into the round of 24. How do you feel about tomorrow then? Are you ready, or...? No, I feel very weak today. Early part of the day was fine, but afterwards... Very slow, a little bit, uh, no stamina, you know, it's too long, it's been too long. Since what time I did you start? Ooh, I started, um, well, I woke up at like 7, and my first game was at maybe 1, no, like 3.30 actually, 3.30 or so. But we had delays as well, so it was even later. We were like 4, so I just sat there doing nothing. I already felt tired before I played my first match, because I was there for so long. 
then the food is not ideal either. It's good, but it's not, you know, it's not my home food. What'd you eat? Uh, some burgers. Uh, it was alright. And some bread. With raisins in the Raisin bread. Did you bring this from the Netherlands? Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I hope I sleep well tonight. And tomorrow I'll play, uh, well, whoever I get. We'll figure that out then. There's still a lot of matches going on right now. Currently it's uh, 11.30. So it's time to sleep. But yeah, there's still a lot of matches going on. These guys need to play tomorrow and then we'll figure out who I play. So. And what's your nighttime routine? Piss off. Turn it off. The next day I had to wait until my opponent got announced. And while waiting, the following interaction happened. Kind of foreshadowing the future. Obviously, after we practiced a couple of games, it got announced that me and Scarlett indeed would have to play against one another on stage. Representing Canada at Shopify Rebellion, Scarlett and her opponent, representing Netherlands at Shopify Rebellion, it's Arso! Let's bring them both onto the stage here. Whoever wins is a victory for Shopify Rebellion. OG players ready to throw down. Let's get it back to our casters. After a terrible start in game number one, game number two went a lot better. Except I decided to push out at this point. It was a mistake to go without Storm, without my plus two. Bailing drops were being queued up and I attacked into a maxed out Scarlet with a crap ton of Banelings. And all I had were Archons and Blink Stalkers. Not quite the army that you want. I ended up losing my entire Archon force as well as a crap ton of people. I still tried my best to win the game, but my desperation push didn't manage to do it. Oh, two. I decided that in the third game I wanted to switch it up. No more passive play, put on some aggression and see if I can put Scarlet on the back foot. Scarlet seemed to have similar ideas as both of us ended up all inning into one another. Me with a prism and nine gates. Scarlet with a queen drop and a crap ton of roaches and links. After some back and forth, me losing a couple of zealots or losing a couple of drones, I did not end up losing my third base and both players kind of stabilized into a somewhat even state of game. And from there on out we move into a 31 minute macro game in which eventually I managed to muster up an army that is too big for Scarlet to truly take care of. And I win the final fight with my carriers, immortals, archons and templars taking up every burrowed investor, corruptor and ultra that's on the map. And with that win, I am back in the series. Enough to one shot the carriers at least almost and she's fighting with what she can but it's not enough. <laughs> Game 4 also goes my way, and we enter the final game. For the fifth time in a row, I don't really scout, and this time it bites me in the bum. Scarlet opts for a quick roach push, which I'm absolutely not prepared for. I try my best to hold, but after 4 minutes, I just can't anymore, and I'm forced to tap out. Here ends the series, as well as my tournament run.